How do venture capital and private equity investors pick their most attractive options? The SA professors and a team of researchers have recently published a Global Country Attractiveness Index, which may serve as a useful tool. In this dynamic guide, they assess the attractiveness of 66 countries based on the main selection criteria identified by institutional investors. We want to, we want to assess how attractive are countries all over the world for institutional investors that invest in venture capital and private equity funds. The question is how to measure the attractiveness of a country. So institutional investors, they, they have to decide in which regions or in which markets of the world they allocate their, uh, their, their capital. And, uh, and they have certain criteria that they decide upon. And the question is, what are these criteria? Our um, index is unique because it fulfills certain criteria no other index is fulfilling. And that is that it is the first time a real academic index. We did a literature review. We did ask um, the players in a questionnaire, and then we went into the databases. And then, of course, it's global, so you know, we cover 66 countries, basically all the countries which are relevant for private equity investments. And it has huge data, um, so never, never before so many data were collected. I mean, there's some 300-something uh, data set, sets and 200,000 data records, so this is one of the biggest efforts ever done in this field, and we can do it over several years. Our private equity attractiveness index is useful, especially for investors in funds. So you have private equity funds, and obviously these funds need, need money, and they get that from normal institutional investors called limited partners. So these institutional investors, limited partners, have to think about how to diversify the risk, in which countries they want to invest, in which funds they want to invest active in certain countries, and that our index explains, so it explains the attractiveness of those countries. So it's a very useful tool for those LPs, for these institutional investors. But it's also useful for what is called the general partners managing those funds, those private equity funds, because they can use that and they're using it already in their sales pitch, meaning if they want to collect money from the investors, they can use that either because they can show that they're in a very good and attractive country, or even if they're in a weak country, as we have seen it, for example, in a fund in Africa, they can actually show how, where the difficulties, where the weaknesses of these countries are, and how they will overcome that. And it's also useful for governments, because governments can learn how to improve the situation for private equity. This index is just a, just helps for a certain moment in the decision process to invest in a fund. Normally what you do is, if you are an investor in private equity funds, you look first into the market opportunity and then you have six other criteria. So it's really at the beginning of the investment process where our, indi in this, uh, where our index can help. That is why this index is a very good complementary um, tool for our investors to judge about funds. We, we determine the factors that are important for institutional investors. And these are six, six factors. We call them the six key drivers. Economic activity, the death of the capital market, investor protection and corporate governance rules in the country, taxation, human and social environment, and entrepreneurial culture and opportunities. The problem now is how to, how to assess these criteria for 66 countries of the world. So what we had to do is we had to search for data series. We need to assess the six key drivers with several criteria. So we tried to find as many data series as, as we could get. The question is still, how do we aggregate these, these data series? We rescaled, we scored the different countries. So let's say the, the, the country that had the largest IPO volume receives 100 points. And that country that has the lowest IPO volume received one point. And all the other, the other countries ranked in between. And if you aggregate uh, this individual scores, you come up with a measure with a ranking. 
are these the six drivers? That was our question. So we asked then the main players. So we did, we did send to all institutional investors out there a questionnaire asking them whether those six drivers are the right ones. And they confirmed. So not only did we do the good homework, so to speak, literature review, but we also checked it with people out there. You know, and they confirmed that these are the main six drivers. And last but not least, we correlated these six drivers with activity in the countries. And it was you know, a very robust result. The best countries are, well, first, very modern countries, very innovative countries. And, and second, those countries that have the largest capital, public capital market. And it's those countries that have a common law system. But what else makes a difference? Well, it's entrepreneurial culture, and it's the human and social environment. And what we face, actually, what we face, unfortunately, for the, for the, for the countries that, that lag behind in, in our index ranking is the simple fact that, well, let's talk about bribing and corruption. You will find that the perceived corruption in those countries is, is pretty high. We are able to compare the country against a certain region, against other countries, against anybody you want to compare it with. We have actually now a web-based tool. Everybody can access who get the access, of course. And was developed uh, by our team and with the support of Ernst & Young, our sponsor. We also can show per country over the years the development of the index and of two sub-indexes, which, you know, it's the private equity, so the later state index, and venture capital index, the early stage index. And we also have the development of each driver, and each, each driver has its sub-factors that influences the driver. We can show how it developed over the years and where it is quartile-wise. So you can easily see per page the position of the country. We did also compare two years, 2005, 2006, and 2009, 2010, and we were interested how countries were moving, really improving. And we can see that, for example, China did the biggest jump. It jumped, so to speak, uh, 14 uh, places. Next very strong countries, Poland plus 10, and India plus 7. And we see, so we can see that not only how much they jumped or they changed their position relatively, but we also can explain it due to the drivers and the factors explaining the drivers. What we expect for the for the for the next coming years is, is two effects. So on the long run, on the long run, we, we we would assume that many of the countries I just I just uh, I was just talking about that many of those countries hopefully and probably work. On their, on their internal problems with respect to bribing and corruption. From that point, uh, those, those countries will, will rise their ranking in the future. That's what we hope. And they will, they will gain some, some points with respect or when benchmarking them with the, other, with the re remaining countries. And what we will also see probably already in the next year's edition is the, the, the whole influence of the, of the financial crisis. Because uh, the those countries that have, or that had strong, or that have still have strong capital markets, uh, they will lose some points, scores, with respect to that criteria. We foresee that we would like to do it at each year. We would like to increase the countries. And obviously, we would like to learn how it is used and how we can improve it so that the usage actually gets increased. So we're very, very much looking forward to any sort of feedback and support for the project.